In this video, I'm going to show you how to mask fur using custom brushes in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to mask hair on subjects that are difficult to select using the normal selection tools by creating a custom fur brush to manually paint the fur back. So we have this image of a raccoon and we want to remove the background and mask out this fur. And you can see that some of the fur is out of focus and when you have a subject that is blurry at the edges, especially hair, it kind of gets hard to select. So let me show you how to remove the background on this particular image. We are just going to use the quick selection tool as a start to make a rough selection around the subject and you don't need to care too much about the hair for now because we're going to be using the refine edge tool for that. If you want to exclude some areas, you can hold Alt or Option and the plus is going to become minus and then you can paint on that area to exclude it from the selection. And on an area like this, it's going to also be difficult to select his ears. So you can hit Q to enter the quick mask mode. And the red area is the area that is not selected. So we're just going to take the brush tool and paint with white to reveal it. Alright, so the selection is good enough. I'm just gonna hit Q to go back to the selection and also select the quick selection tool and then I'm gonna click on the select and mask button. So we're gonna use select and mask to mask the fur and on the right hand side you have the view mode if you wanna change it to something like onion skin or black and white. I like to use overlay so I'm gonna select that. And then on the left hand side I'm gonna take the refine edge tool and using this tool you can paint on the edges and Photoshop is gonna automatically attempt to detect the edges of the fur and select it for you. You can see that the selection is not perfect and some of the edges were not selected properly. And that's gonna happen when your subject is out of focus. So I'm just going to accept the changes and before I click OK, I'm going to change the output to layer mask and click OK. It's going to create a layer mask for us and I also have my background image underneath the layer so I'm going to turn it on. So the refine edge tool did an OK job for detecting the edges but we're going to need to refine this selection a little bit more in order for the edges to look better. Let me just add a levels adjustment layer to show you the edges better. I chose a similar image to my background to easily blend the two images together but if you are using a different background image you're gonna need to paint that fur manually and that's what I'm going to show you in a little bit. But before I do that I want to clean the layer mask a little bit. So I'm gonna hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask and I want to clean the edges a little bit more and for that I'm going to use the brush tool and change the blending mode to overlay. Then change the color to black and I'm just going to paint on the edges to remove that fringing from the background. And the overlay blending mode is going to help you clean the edges without destroying so much of the details. And it's okay if it does because we will repaint the edges with our custom brush. Alright, so let's create the custom brush and for that I'm going to create a new document with the dimension of 500 by 500 pixels. 
Okay, I'm gonna take the brush tool and I'm gonna make it hard. In fact, I'm gonna choose a brush with the pen pressure enabled and I'm gonna choose a smaller brush size. Something right about this size and also I need to change the blender mode back to normal. And on a new layer, what I'm going to do is make a stroke with the brush and make it a little bit curved just like this one to create something that looks like a hair. You can also increase the smoothing to help you paint smoother strokes. I'm using a graphics tablet but if you don't have one you can always use my brush and I'll provide the link for you in the description to download it. So I like this one and I'm going to save it as a brush preset. You can do that by going to edit, define brush preset. And it's gonna give you a preview and I'm going to rename it to hair brush. So this brush we just created is gonna automatically be selected. I'm going to delete this one now and show you what we can do with it. So this is what it looks like when I paint with it and we're gonna need to modify some settings and make it look like realistic hair. So let's go back to the document and I'm gonna create a new layer. Then we need to open up the brush settings panel and from here we're gonna be able to do a lot of things to the brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is check shape dynamics and then increase the size jitter and you're gonna be able to see the changes in this preview window. And this is basically gonna make different and random sizes of the brush when you paint. Next one is jitter, and that's gonna rotate the brush and make it a little bit more random to break the repetition. I'm gonna keep mine low, like so, and that's gonna be it for the shape dynamics settings. Next one is scattering, and from here you're gonna be able to add spacing horizontally or vertically. But in this case, we don't wanna add too much scattering, so about 30% is gonna be okay. I'm gonna also add transfer and what's nice about transfer is that the individual brush strokes will have different opacity levels and that's gonna make it look more realistic. And the same goes for the flow as well and you can control that with the pen pressure if you want to if you have a graphics tablet. Okay so another option you have in scattering is that you can increase the count of the brush strokes from here but personally I like to have it all the way to zero so I can build up the effect and have more control. In fact I'm gonna click on brush tip shape and increase the spacing a little bit. Okay that looks good. The last thing I'm gonna check is build up and let me show you one last thing in shape dynamics. So in the angle jitter, I can change the control to direction. And now what will happen is that the brush stroke will follow the direction of your mouse. And this can be very helpful to follow the curved edge of whatever you are masking. Okay, so we are done modifying the brush settings. That is how it looks like. And we can save all the settings we did to a brush preset that we can use in the future. And you can do that by clicking here and choose new brush preset. I'm gonna rename this one to hairbrush2 and you can also capture the brush size, the color in the swatch and even the opacity and the flow and Photoshop is gonna remember these settings the next time you use this brush. And you can see that the new brush we just created is at the bottom. Alright so let's start painting the fur and I'm going to select the layer mask and using the brush tool I'm gonna set the foreground color to white so we can start revealing some of that fur back. What you can also do is match the hair direction is if you go to brush tip shape you can change the angle from here whenever you need to and you can also flip it X or Y by checking these boxes. So I'm just gonna start painting here with a small brush size to add small hair to fix the edge. 
And before I paint more hair, I want to make a copy of the original layer. And I'm going to also delete the layer mask because I want to convert it to smart object so I can keep the resolution quality when I resize it down. So now I can just alt click on the original layer mask and drag it to the smart object layer to make a copy of it. So you can see in the layer mask view, I'm trying to fix the edge by filling these gaps with a small brush size. So now that we did that, we can paint with a bigger brush to add a little bit variation in size. If you feel like the angle of the brush is too much for this image, you can always change the brush settings and save it as a new preset and you can even make other brushes with less curved strokes to add more variation to the fur. So right here on the ears, we're gonna need to paint with the opposite direction and a smaller brush size. So I'm gonna change the angle of the brush and also uncheck Flip X. Alright, so I'm gonna take my time to paint the fur at the edges all the way and I will get back when I'm done. Okay, so I finished painting the fur and this is how the layer mask looks like now. So this is before and after. I'm gonna delete the layer mask of the original image because we're gonna be needing it to blend the two images together. So as you can see, the background is out of focus and the edges of my subject was a little bit out of focus as well. So what I would like to do is feather the edges of the layer mask a little bit to match it with the background. So what we can do is select the layer mask and in the mask properties, we can increase the feather to blur the edges of the layer mask. And this is non-destructive, means you can always go back and change the value. Alright, so let's blend the two images together and I'm going to select both layers and scale them down. And now that I did that, I need to decrease the feather a little bit. So now I'll turn on my background layer and I'm going to try to align it with the background image. And now we can just create an inverted layer mask using Alt or Option and then take the brush tool and I'm going to choose a normal soft one 
and then I'm going to start revealing the background here by painting with white. You can also reduce the flow to blend the grass together a little bit better. Okay, now I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer on top of that and create a clipping mask. And I'm going to increase the saturation a little bit. Then I'm going to add the levels adjustment layer to make the image a little bit darker. And what I can also do is add the levels adjustment layer and clip it to this subject and make the subject also darker. And lastly, I'll add a color balance adjustment layer and I'm going to add a little bit of green to match it with the background. Alright, so that's how to use the power of custom brushes to manually mask your subject. And you can use this technique for a lot of different hair types. I hope you guys learned something new in this video. Please share your thoughts in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support, consider checking out my courses at retouchstudio.com. Every purchase you make help me create content for you here. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.